Welcome to my CIE IGCSE Chemistry ATP Paper 6 predictions video. So I'm going to be talking you through the sort of things I'm expecting to come up in the practical paper. Now obviously the first thing you need to be aware of is all your variables. This is highly likely to come up. So remember the independent variable is what you change, the dependent variable is what you measure, and the control variables are what you keep the same. You'll most likely be asked to design an investigation during this paper, so do use the variable layout there. Make sure you double check the specification to look at the required practicals that they're expecting you to know about. Now, a common practical that comes up is rates of reaction. So remember, we could be changing the surface area of a solid reactant, the concentration, the temperature of the acid, as well as the addition of a catalyst. So if, for example, we were to take calcium carbonate, so marble chips, we would react that with hydrochloric acid, and then we could potentially change the temperature of that hydrochloric acid to investigate how quickly the carbon dioxide is released. Remember, when we look at rates, there is an implication of time. So for example, we could be looking at the volume of CO2 released in 60 seconds, and we would use a gas syringe in order to capture that. As with all science practicals, do include relevant apparatus, that could be using a gas syringe. Another alternative approach to this particular experiment is using a conical flask that has cotton wool at the top. The cotton wool allows the CO2 to escape and we can measure how quickly that CO2 is escaping by looking at the change in mass on the balance reading that the conical flask is sitting on. This only works with a gas like carbon dioxide because it has a high MR. Gases like hydrogen have a very low MR and therefore we'd prefer to use the gas syringe approach. But yeah, like I said, if they ask you to design an investigation, you do need to make sure you have all your variables sorted as well as appropriate apparatus. They could ask you to draw some apparatus. Remember in chemistry, we draw everything 2D. Now is not the time for your amazing artistic skills. They'll want to see the gauze written as a dotted line. The Bunsen burner, remember, is just an upward arrow with the word heat underneath. Increasingly, they're asking you about chemical tests, and this is a real problem because there are so many different tests you need to learn. But I would expect you to make sure you know the tests for nitrates, sulfates, carbonates, all the positive metal ion tests, both with sodium hydroxide reactions, as well as the flame test results. And they expect you to know a huge amount of detail, including all the color changes and whether that precipitate dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide or excess ammonia. So do make sure you have a look and remember my revision guide has a really nice summary there to help speed up your learning process. If this comes up in the exam, I would make sure that when you see all these things come up that you annotate the paper fully so you can actually remember Okay, that was the test for sulfates because barium nitrate produced a white precipitate of barium sulfate. Do add little annotations throughout. And remember, there's no point rushing through this paper. You need to read every single word to make sure that you're not missing anything. And that includes making sure that if you're reading any volumes using measuring cylinders or burettes, that you're reading that nice and accurately at the bottom of the meniscus and providing the appropriate number of decimal places or significant figures. Often with temperatures, they ask you to record it to the nearest 0.5 degrees. So again, make sure you're doing that and use the other results in the results table to help guide that. They will knock off a mark if you miss out a zero, for example. Coupled with chemical tests, there's no excuse for not knowing how to test for carbon dioxide, how to test for hydrogen, how to test for oxygen. These are your bread and butter as far as chemical tests go. And do make sure you can differentiate between the chemical and physical test for water. Remember, the physical test is all about checking its boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. Chemical tests involve chemicals. So, for example, white anhydrous copper sulfate turns blue in the presence of water. But yeah, the specification very clearly points out the different practicals. And therefore, it's important that you have recapped each and every one of these ahead of your exam.